So today, let's continue with the teaching on turning, transforming uh, suffering and happiness into enlightenment. It talks about to transform. It, it ha talks about two aspects. The first aspect is uh, transforming suffering into enlightenment, and the second is transforming happiness into enlightenment. In terms of transforming suffering into enlightenment, it has two aspects. One is relative, and the other one is ult uh, ultimate. Same applies to transforming happiness. So right now, we're talking about transforming suffering into enlightenment in the relative sense. So how do we do that? As it is stated before in the last class, suffering to everyone is not very welcomed. Doesn't matter whomsoever you are. Especially, I think, as mundane beings, it is very rare to enjoy suffering. At least the people that we encounter, people that we know, I don't think there are many people who enjoy suffering. Many people would say that, please, no suffering. Or even if there are suffering that does appear, does occur, they would get quite fearful. In fact, suffering in sam samsara is continuous, just like waves in the ocean. One wave comes and right away another wave uh, just gushes again. It's one after another continuously. So in our world, many people wish that I wish my suffering could end early, could end soon. I wish that I could be happy always. That is the kind of thinking majority of the mundane beings have. However, is it possible? We can see from, from the ancient time till now, let it be from the West or the East, in terms of history, in terms of uh, people who lived for a long period of time, in terms of how we read their lives and how they spent their lives in the literature and articles and so on, we can definitely see people from 300, 500 thousand years ago, they also wish to depart from suffering, they also want to have happiness. But can you actually have it? In fact, I think it's very rare, except for very uh, small number of uh, genuine bodhisattvas or, or great practitioners. Therefore, the kind of pithins Instruction like this is quite different than those of you, uh, than those of teachings who uh, that you can receive in the world. This is probably quite a new practice for you. Many people studied the Dharma for many years. Of course, in the esoteric teaching, we talk about the suffering and happiness uh, is uh, non-dual wisdom when you look at the nature of it. However, in this relative world, in fact, the suffering can become favorable conditions in our practice. Not only favorable conditions to our practice, in fact, we are not running away from this suffering. Suffering. When suffering <laughs> occurs in our life, problem occurs in our life, we would say, oh, wonderful, there's suffering, there's problem, and I'm really happy about it. I have great merit to be suffering right now. So next time, if you ask someone, how was your sleep? And if the other person reply you by saying, it was terrible, and then you can say, wow, that's wonderful, you're so meritorious that you didn't sleep well, and you're so meritorious is that you didn't sleep well uh, to suffer from it. So we must say it from the opposite way and respond in the opposite way. We should accustom ourselves to it. And uh, when people ask you, how's your health? How are you doing? And you would say, not good at all. And you, you can probably reply to say that with the blessings of the three jewels, may my health uh, 
may, may I never be healthy again. So I think that's very difficult for mundane beings to accept. This kind of rebellious thinking is in fact quite meaningful and really valuable. Because if we kept on thinking in the traditional linear way and Keep, uh, keep our mentality going after, uh, keep our mind going after happiness, chasing after happiness. I think whenever suffering uh, dawns on us, it would make us feel rather quite fearful. And it seems that suffering is always chasing after you. But if you start uh, to have the kind of uh, courageous mind and uh, thinking to yourself that there's nothing wrong and nothing bad about suffering, so why don't I invite more suffering? In such a way, it seems that suffering gets shied away and it doesn't really like to get close to you anymore. At that time, I think all the Maras won't be very harmful to you anymore. In this way, if you, you can accept suffering, if you can train yourself in such a way, I think it will be very helpful to your life, even if not right away. But, after, uh, but understanding this kind of teaching won't bring any harm. Therefore, in our practice, there are so many different, uh, we should try out many other, many different kinds of practices, different kinds of methods uh, in our practice. For example, maybe there are practices that's just not for you, but there are practices that could be very uh, good for you and you can adapt them very easily. So for those kind of uh, teaching that would be very helpful to you and very uh, easy for you to adapt, then you should treat that kind of method as your deity. I remembered once I met some uh, students who studied abroad in the West and uh, they told me they studied this particular teaching and they felt that this teaching is very helpful to them and therefore they would carry this teaching with them at all times just like how they would carry their deity with them all the time i think after we receive the tra oral transmission as well as the teaching on it uh, we should carry it with us at all times we should read over it uh, again and again familiarize ourselves with the actual teaching, not just the words, but the actual teaching, actual method. In this way, I think it's going to transform your life and it's going to help your life a lot. And when it is difficult for you to, when uh, other, and when the great difficulty comes to you, especially the ones that cannot be faced or cannot be accepted by others, I think as long as you can familiarize yourself with this kind of teaching, it would be rather very uh, very easy for you to face b great problems. Um, practitioners, in fact, should have and should have some uncommon pith instructions and uh, the pith instructions that is difficult to attain um, by the mundane beings, but by non-practitioners. Because if everyone could, uh, because you're going, if you're practicing whatever everyone's practicing, that is not a pith, instru pith instruction anymore. If everyone can do it, but you cannot do it, then we should feel quite ashamed of ourselves. Uh, after all, we've studied for so long and and uh, we should then carry more pith instructions to practice on, uh, on us, especially when uh, afflictions dawn on us. Uh, so we should have more courage to face it. Otherwise, uh, you only study it, but um, it, you only get the merit of studying, but it doesn't really uh, apply to you practically in your life.